All right, so this week's video is going to be about Odyssey versions, um, primarily XT versus XT32. And I know there's a couple of different versions of XT, like multi-EQ, things like that, but I'm just gonna boil it down to being regular XT and being XT32, which is the upgraded version. Now, uh, I'm shooting from inside the RV project. Those of you that are new to the channel, uh, I'm converting an RV into an actual rolling home theater. Um, and so I'm still in, a, this is still progress here. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna cover up that wood. I've got this really silly plastic entertainment center there, uh, just kind of as a placeholder till I find something that I really need. Um, and it's something that's gonna work perfectly because it's, you know, I'm working with smaller dimensions here. Um, but the reason for doing this video is because I had some things change recently that really made some things really clear in a specific way. Um, so for those of you that are really new, uh, room correction is basically where you, you plug in a microphone uh, into the amplifier and you put it in your listening positions and it basically, uh, you know, sends out a series of chirps and tells you what everything's doing and sets your distances and all kinds of other things. It's not perfect. Uh, I usually have to make adjustments and you can check out my video on the uh, adjusting my Denon X6200. It's a really lengthy video, but I go in and show you everything I do and why. Um, so anyway, that's what's happening here. But the point of the video uh, that I'm shooting right now is I had the Denon uh, X2000 in here, and right now I've got the X6200. Now, the Denon X2000 only has Odyssey XT, or maybe it's called Multi-EQ XT. Whatever it is, it's not XT32. And there's a lot of, there are so many things to know when it comes to looking for an amplifier. Uh, you know, people are looking at, well, does it pass uh, 4K? Well, does it pass 4K HDR? Does it pass Dolby Vision? You know, all these different things, all these different things that you gotta keep out, keep your head out for, and it's just, it, it, it can be mind numbing and it can be really frustrating. So I look for earmarks, personally. I look for things that are specifically uh, if it has this one item, it probably has the rest of the items I'm looking for. Um, and, you know, like DTSX, does it have DTSX? If it doesn't have DTSX, chances are it's not very up to date. Um, you know, if it has RO3D, chances are it's really up to date. So uh, things like that. Um, those are earmarks that I look for. And the Odyssey version uh, with Denon and Marantz products is a, a big indicator to me of how good of a quality of amp it's going to be. And so... I set up the, this uh, with the X2000, ran room correction, and I had a problem with my uh, seating over here. Now, uh, if you guys are following along, I just got all of this set up. I'm pretty happy with it. All of these are recliners. Um, happy with the way it's looking. It's comfortable, good stuff. So, but anyway, the point of this video is that I had a major issue with boundary gain. Uh, in this seat, I had, you know, it was, decent base and everything like that. It was, it was all pretty balanced, but as you went over in the corner, it was really overwhelming. Uh, it was boomy, and I don't like boomy. Boomy is like, it's the F word to me. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, I like well-balanced, articulate bass that's clean, it's polished, it's, it's right, it's correct. Um, and so I wasn't getting that in the corner. And then top it all off, if anybody moved forward in their seat, um, the bass went away. So it was just really kind of a, a cluster of, of badness. It wasn't right for sure. And so I was like, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to put in bass traps. I'm going to have to, you know, put in some treatments and, you know, all kinds of different things were going through my head. Well, how am I going to fix this? Because this sounds terrible. I can't have that. And so anyway, uh, I got in touch with uh, uh, Denon and Marantz and they sent out a uh, Marantz SR7012. Uh, which is a great amplifier. I'm going to do a review on that soon. So what I was able to do is take my X2000, put it away, and bring out the X6200 in here. So I rear on room correction, basically followed the exact same process, did everything right, um, it's the exact same way I did before, and amazingly, went away. The, the problem I was having just cleared up, I mean, I won't say 100% perfectly, but when you move from this seat to this seat, it's not this dramatic difference like it was before. I mean, you're still gonna get a little bit more bass over there in that seat, but this seat and that seat are very similar. So, it, you know, if I was gonna have someone come in and listen to it, I'd say, well, if you like normal bass, sit in these two chairs. If you like really, you know, strong bass, sit in the outside corners. You know, it, it, it's, 
You're not going to get absolute perfection in a situation like this because of the boundary gain. But the difference in the room correction was, I mean, it was so dramatically evident that I it was, I couldn't ignore it. It was very good. Um, and so, you know, a lot of, you go from amplifier to amplifier, you know, in, in some cases, uh, it, the difference in sound is very noticeable. In some cases, it's not noticeable as much. Um, you know, the, the, and I don't mean to disparage the X2000. It's a good little amplifier. It sounds good. Um, in my listening levels, I never really ran into an issue where it was running out of juice. Um, it got plenty loud, um, plenty clear, things like that. But the sound profile that I get out of the uh, X6200 and the, and the Marantz, both of which have X32, it was, it was it's noticeable. It's you, you notice it sounds better. Uh, and this is also aimed at those of you who have older amplifiers uh, that didn't have room correction, uh, that just had uh, you know, either no room correction at all or, or just XT. Um, you know, I've, I've asked people, because I'll, you know, I, people get in touch with me through Facebook uh, and, and all these different things, and they'll send me emails. And a lot of the feedback I get when people make the upgrade um, from an older Denon product to the newer Denon product, I think like the CI versions, things like that, and they went up and, and they upgraded to something that had XT32. Generally, the difference, I mean, people are just beside themselves with how much better it sounds. So a lot of the times, how good your amplifier sounds will be directly related to the room correction because they add specific filters, they add specific profiles. And, you know, again, this is all personal. Everything's personal with audio. You know, what do you like? What don't you like? And for some people, they won't agree with, you know, the way Odyssey sounds what or whatnot. Um, you know, and again, I go through and I make a bunch of corrections. So, uh, you know, just running it and calling it a day is not what I do. I change crossovers. I change, you know, I, I change it from reference to flat. And there's a lot of different things. You, again, you can check out my video on how I set up my uh, X6200 on that. Um, but generally, I'll say that the... the uh, the XT32 really, it's an improvement on the sound, definitely, over the regular XT. And their, the, their parameters of setting things up, I find very agreeable. Uh, so I guess that'd be the, the big takeaway, is that you know, for me, I know it's a big difference. So when you're looking at an amplifier, does it have XT32? That's a big one. Um, the sub EQ HT uh, is part of what makes this work. Uh, you know, again, I was willing to make a bunch of changes right here, and I'm like, I don't have to now. It sounds good. Um, so, you know, again, if you're in a small room like this, uh, an improved room correction can make a dramatic difference. Um, that's exactly my experience right now. So, um, you know, other things to look for doesn't have, um, you know, pre outs to where you can run external amplification on all channels. If you want to, you know, buy an amplifier that has that, then you can add amplifiers later down the road. Um, that's another good option to look for. Uh, I know they're always changing amplifier models. I know they're always adding new things, things like that. Um, but, you know, it, and, and, and to that point, you can get some really good deals on older models. Uh, right now, a couple of good ones to look at are um, the X, you know, uh, yeah, you know, pretty much. I I think you should start with the three thousand series, so X thirty three hundred or better. Um, you know, I, that's something I would personally look for uh, it, because it's got all the, the the preamps and stuff. And then from there, the the four thousand series is a great series. So like the forty three hundred or better, uh, it's a, it's a great all arounder. It's a nine channel amplifier. Um, and of course, the sixty three hundred or better. Uh, I have the sixty two hundred. I don't have access to some of the apps and things. So. Um, but those are just some things I look for. And then a lot of the 4K stuff and, you know, that stuff kind of goes along. I mean, look for the stuff that you really want. But, you know, those are the earmarks I look for. Does it have preamps? Does it have XT32? Um, you know, and again, this is really Denon and Marantz specific. But, um, you know, there are other amplifiers out there that have room correction and different various types and things like that. But... It was just my experience. It was very relevant given the situation because I was, it really had me like, I mean, I run these giant pads across the top here, all kinds of crazy stuff. And I just don't have to do that now 
because of the better room correction. So uh, anyway, that's this week's video. Um, again, I'll be doing another video on this here. Uh, I'm just trying it out a little bit, but I'm really happy with it. Again, recliners on every seat, that's awesome. Uh, that little, uh, <laughs> this is fun. And then, um, yeah, I gotta do something about my entertainment center there because that's just terrible and I'll go into why later. Um, it was never meant to be a long-term solution, but um, anyway, I'll go into that and I still have more to finish here. Um, you know, weather's been kind of messing with me a little bit, but anyway, uh, that's this week's video. Um, I appreciate you guys watching and the subscriptions. Uh, I really appreciate uh, people following my links and things like that. Uh, every little bit helps at this point. Um, I've got a lot of things that are happening, and uh, <laughs> so the support is appreciated, the, the comments, the likes, uh, all that. I really appreciate it. So, again, thanks so much for watching, and stay tuned for more, and please subscribe.